Welcome everyone to the Sunday Puzzlers Paradise class. In this class, we're gonna do lots of puzzles. And today we'll do a positions from World Champion Games. And in this particular position, uh, we have White playing World Champion Alexander Alakine. World Champion number Three? Four. Four. Correct, Arjun. Arjun, who is the first three? Um, Steinitz, Lasker, Capablanca. Steinitz, Lasker, Capablanca. And then was Alakine. Alexander Alakine. So, and in this position, he's playing with the white pieces. Uh, and he won the game. Alexander Alakine was a world champion twice. Okay. 1927 to 1935, and also 1937 to 1946. And uh, let's see if you can play like Alakine here, okay? White to play and win. These are not just checkmate positions. These are positions where you have to come up with a win. Yes, what happened, Arjun? You already know it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, take your time and calculate all the lines, okay? And let's give a chance to the audience here to find it too. So what is the idea here? It seems like a big advantage, but how to win it, yeah? How to proceed here? Now we got Arjun also ready. Let's see. Okay, calculate what to do. You're so active. You have the knight, you have the rooks on a seventh rank. How to win this position, yeah? How to break through. Okay, let me ask uh, Arjun. Uh, let me ask Arjun first, yes. Uh, rook takes g7. Rook takes g7, Arjun, but that's a sacrificing a knight. Takes the knight, and now you play a very neat move. Ashish, what was your solution? Oh, I'm different. Huh? Was this your solution, Ashish? No. Okay, one second. What is Ashish saying? Yes. Rook Ooh, fancy. Very fancy move, but what is the threat? It's a very nice move, because I cannot take this guy. He takes on f8 with a mate. If I take this guy, he takes on a with a mate. If I take the knight, he goes check and then brings the rook back with a mate. But what are you threatening? That's the thing. Yeah, but okay. I, I, I'll just move my bishop. Adi. Yeah, okay, I moved the bishop, buddy. <laughs> I'll go bishop c4, and I don't think... This is a nice move, Ashish. Good work, but it's not really effective enough, okay? Beco yeah, we could, and we could, and we have a very nice advantage. Most likely, we're going to win the game. But the answer in the game is much more stronger because what Arjun said was correct. Takes, takes king e5, and now the knight, the rook is under attack. Show me how black can defend this rook here. Or what can he do with this rook? So if he moves the rook backwards, what do you do, Arjun? Checka? Checkmate, because the rook is now occupying the square the king was going to plan to escape for. No more. No more escape there. So, he has to play... Sorry. And if he doubles up the rooks like this... Check. Checkmate. Okay. 
check and checkmate. What if he what? He takes the rook with his king. Oh, he cannot. Yeah, he cannot, yeah? So that's why it's funny. You sacrifice your piece, you go here, and you put him in a position where he cannot do anything, okay? Is it clear for everybody how white wins this position now? Clear? Everybody got it? I want to make sure everybody understands this, okay? So again, once again, we proceed with which move? He takes. And now it's... There's no way to defend this. Once you defend it, you're going to get made. Bobby, you got this? All right, moving forward. That was world champion Alexander Alakine. Now, after Alakine was a world champion that is not as known as the others, you know. So let me set up the position first. That will give you a time to think about his name. Who was the next world champion after Alakine? World champion number five. So, okay, world champion number five. He was a world champion briefly for only two years, from 1935 to 1937. And his name is? Bobby. Max Uwe. Max Uwe. And where is he from? Ashish. Oh, yes, Arjun. I think Germany. Very close, Netherlands, Netherlands, okay. And I believe he was also FIDE president. FIDE, you know, Federation of Chess. So, he, in this game, he is playing with the white pieces, okay. Let me see if I can, and his opponent is Nestler, Nestler Dubrovnik, Olympiad 1950. And how did he proceed here to win this game effectively? It's just a move after which his opponent resigned. Imagine how strong finishing touch it was that his opponent just resigned. We will do some positions of every champion, so, you, you know. We'll go a couple of more in order. I mean, by looking at it, it's pretty clear that White's position is really, really dominating. The question is how to proceed, yeah? Okay. Okay, I want to ask, let's see, who else? Hadi? No? Not yet? Think, think, calculate. You gotta open up the position, Adi. <coughs> How you, you, that king is sheltered, yeah? He's kind of tucked in, you know, tucked in behind the pawns. So you gotta open it up. <coughs> you got to open it up. Arjun. Uh, rook, G5. rook G5 by Arjun. Attacking the knight, uh, the rook. So now, what can he do here? Threat is here, and if he goes knight g8, knight e8, what do you do? Checkmate. Now, he has to take, and very important not to rush here, because it's not too late to spoil this position. What do you do, Ashish? Queen h8 check. He has to go here. Check. Checkmate. Okay. So rook g5, he takes, check, mate. So, and that's all because of this very strong pawn. And what do we call a pawn like this when we have a strong pawn like this? What is the term we use when the pawn is on a sixth rank? Yes. Wedge. wedge. Pawn wedge. Okay. And if it block on a third rank, that's pawn wedge as well. Pawn wedge, wedge pawn. All right. Okay. Next world champion after him was Mikhail Botvinnik. Okay. Mikhail Botvinnik. And he won, he won a lot, a lot of titles. Okay. 
So this position is by him. Okay. Black to play and win. Mikhail Botvinnik. Three times, three time world champion. First time he won the title in 1948. And he was there for nine years until 1957. How did Botvinnik win this? And his opponent is. Jurgis Botvinnik, 1931. Well, it's not so easy. The so first move is very hard move. So if your move it looks very simple, <laughs> look maybe there is something you're missing. Even the high-ranked players are not raising their hand. They know it's a tough one. I'm threatening to take your pawn here. You see that? With the rook? So if you try to go rook d1, which looks natural, I just take your pawn. Black to play and win. Black, yeah. I can flip the board if you like, or you like it this way. Hey. Okay, any other students maybe want to raise their hand to try, no? Let's see, Adi, Bobby, come on, you guys can do this. Isaac, <laughs> Isaac is raising his hand, okay. <laughs> Rook takes C2? Rook F2 back. And close, yeah? I mean, C2 pawn is your everything in this position, okay? C2 pawn is very, very strong. So what to do to hold that C2 pawn? That is the question, okay? You know, and sometimes we have to do something really sharp, really extraordinary stuff to hold it, you know? It's not just any move you play, you're going to hold it. Something extraordinary we need to do. And now we got Arjun. Rook c4. Rook c4. Look at that move. Sacrificing the rook, giving away a full rook. Now he takes bishop c5. Pin it. He cannot take it, right? So he goes here. b3. He's pinned again. He moves away. He wants to slip it away. What do you do? Tukka. Tukka. And you push the pawn. And you push B2. And you win the pawn. Any questions? Perfect. Now, if he takes, we promote the pawn into a queen. Okay. Again, we start out with rook c4, takes bishop c5, b3, takes, takes, b2, takes, I go b1, queen. Yeah, I mean, that's a kind of, you know, that, that's a very serious move because you have to really give up your rook to get these two pawns connect together, okay? Very, very important. All right, now 
I will set up some little bit different type of positions for you, okay? So I'll be a little bit This will be a uh, more uh, current games, okay? Games from 2016. <coughs> White to play and win. This is a game between two strong grandmasters, Valakitin <coughs> versus Friedman. How did Grandmaster Volokitin win this position? Playing as white. Ashish? Uh, Rook T1. That was excellent. Queen E2. Queen B4 check. Now I have two options. King H4 or King E6. If I go King E6, Check. Can go here, it's covered. Can go here, can go here, have to go here. Mate. If I go here. Checkmate. If he goes here now. Bishop B7. Checkmate anyway. Yeah, so rook t1, he, it's very, very difficult to do anything, okay? This, this queen b4 is coming, so, no. So it was very, very risky. I'm not sure, actually, black took some pawns. Something terribly went wrong. Uh, wow, this is actually an Olympiad. It's, yeah, something really went terribly wrong for black. In Olympiad game, he has got himself in such a big trouble here, so... Certainly things didn't, didn't go, didn't look good here. Okay, very good. So the move is rook d1, a natural move. It's, it's very often you need to bring a piece into the game to finish the attack. When you have a strong attack, you don't see immediate way to win. You see if you can bring more pieces into the attack, okay? Black to play and win. Grandmaster Rosenthalis played this game. Eduard Rosenthalis from Lithuania. How did he win this position? And there is no question who is better here. But how to break through? What kind of ideas you see here? Bobby? What is your threat? But F2 is guarded by the bishop. I mean, you're putting pressure on it, right? But are, are the queen C2? And he's got the correct answer. Show, it, show us again the ideas. Go ahead. Rook a3, attacking the queen. What is the only square the queen can go to? And now the queen is on inferior position, and we're going to go for? Rook takes c3, look at that. Now he has to take it, knight e3 check, attacking this and attacking the queen. Got it? And winning the queen and winning the game as well. See how that works? You got to set it up and then follow it up, okay? Set it up and follow it up. So you start out with rook a3, queen drops back to c2, rook takes e3. Wonderful tactic, thanks to the strong knight position on c4. Torre, Eugene Torre, Ramboldini, okay? It seems like white has a very nice advantage, but how to break through? How to break through. Torre is playing white <coughs> against Ramboldini, Grandmaster. Eugene Torre, the first Grandmaster from Philippines, who is a legend there. Now, how to break through to the Blacks' defense here? It seems like the Queen is tied up to the Knight. 
problems, problems, problems. Yeah, we're seeing here. What kind of clever plan he came up with to do it, huh? What can you do here? What kind of break do you see in this position, okay? That will help you win the game. Arjun? Queen A5. Queen A5, Bobby. Queen A5? Yes. Now, the point here is, guys, if I take, you just take back with a knight. And you're winning the pawn on c6 because there's no knight b8 option. And I win this, win the game. So I have to play queen b3, no choice. Queen c7, queen c7 now attacks the knight. The knight cannot be protected. Not queen d8 because queen d8 allows knight f8 or knight f6, so knight f8. So it's pinned. So he has to go here. Check. He goes here. Check. He goes here, you have bishop e5, check. Goes on g8, you take check, check. And you just basically take all the pawns that he has, okay? You're going to take all of his pawns and win the game. Yeah. The point here is we want to try to get it, the queen active, you know? And to take, to take advantage of this, this, this pin. If the king was, let's say, on g8, this line wouldn't have worked. The funny thing is, it's quite possible black just played king f7 here, overlooking the queen a5. Instead, he should have played king h7 or something, and then he's, you know, he's okay. I mean, this position is not that bad. But king on f7 runs into a very strong tactic. Queen here and queen on b4. All right. White to play and win. Dominguez versus Adiban. It was played in Spanish League, okay? Spanish League Championship here. Wow, very nice idea. Three minutes thinking. Hands down, calculate. It's lots of calculation. Ashish. Got to calculate like, you know, four moves. And there are a lot of interesting sub variations too if you, if you find a main move. Bobby. Queen F7. Better, Bobby. Queen F7 is a decent move, but he has rook E7. Calculate Arjun. It's deep calculation. Lots of intricacy lines, okay? A lot of tricky lines. Adik. Excellent. Now, if he takes your bishop f6 mate, okay? There are a lot of lines to calculate, though. Takes bishop f6 mate, and if he goes rook e7, what's the finishing line? Uh, Perfect. And that just crushes through. Takes queen f6 mate. So, uh, he has to play knight e6. So, here, knight e6. Bishop takes f6, excellent. By the way, there is another winning idea here. Rook takes g7. He has to take with the knight, and then you play knight g5. Okay? So you go bishop f6. Now, if you can't take a check, so he cannot take its mate. So he has to go here. Now, rook e7, which he did. No. What am I saying? Bishop f8. Knight e6. Yeah, bishop f6, bishop f8. And now, the final idea that you need to find, okay?
Arjun. Wait up. It's, you know, you got to continue with a tactical idea here. Adik. Knight g5? Knight g5? Knight takes g5. You don't want that knight to take you, you know, that's the main thing. A really, really brutal finish here. Ashish. Rook g7. Yes. Rook takes g7. Look at that. Now, if he takes with the knight, then what's the finish? An unstoppable mate on h7. So he has to take back with the bishop. Knight g5. Now, he cannot take knight g5 because you have a mate on g7. And if he goes here, you have a mate on h7. So it has to go here. What do you do then? And now which, the last guy who, who says, I want to be in a game as well, you know? I want to be a participant, right? You always bring everybody into the game, okay? And now if he takes rook f6 mate, and if he takes here, queen g7, checkmate. Let's do this again so everybody can uh, see how it happens. So it started with queen h6, right, guys? Queen h6. Knight g6 is bad too. We have rook g6. If he takes, you have a mate on f6 immediately. So it has to go here. Now, bishop takes f6. By the way, rook g7 is a nice finish too. It's just mate on h7. So he played rook g7. Uh, sorry, bishop f6. He goes here. Rook g7. Knight g5. Mate on h7. Mate on h7, okay? Um... Yeah, this is very nice. King bishop f6, queen h7 mate. Knight g5, queen g7 mate. And if he goes king g8, check. And always bring the last piece into the game, okay? And that's the game over. All right, thank you everybody for joining this class and happy new year to everybody, to our uh, listeners. You know, and we'll be back again after New Year's with new videos as well, okay? See you guys next week, okay?